Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. Today, I want to go over my early Atlas passive skill tree, my decision making, why do I do the things that I plan to do uh, on the, all the reasoning behind it. And for the people that are just here to copy the tree, feel free to do so in the description below. If you are more interested in why am I doing the certain things that I do, then yeah, feel free to stay a while and listen. All right, let's head over to Max Troll. Uh, into the Path of Exile um, section here under Tools. We have the Atlas Passive Tree or here linked uh, on the Path of Exile es uh, Essentials. And we're going to put it on full screen, put it in the middle. And first of all, the first thing that we do before making an Atlas Passive Tree, grab a sip of coffee. Hey, come on. Like, you can't make a, a good tree without, like, coffee and stuff, you know? But that probably just counts for me. Good. Uh, first and foremost is... An Atlas passive tree is always assisting you with the stuff that you want to do in Path of Exile, right? Means if my goal is, uh, would it be to farm Mage Blood or Headhunter on day two or three of the league, then my Atlas passive tree will most likely look different uh, to what I'm going to do here, right? And my personal goal is always on every single league that I play, and this is, has been the same uh, since I started the game, actually since seven years, more or less, I'm doing the same stuff on League Start, and this is completion. That means I'm not stressing myself. The first things, I don't care about League mechanics, I don't care about currency making strategies. All I want to do early on is, on League Start, um, get through the campaign, uh, finish my entire atlas in the best way possible with self-sustaining strategies like map drops left and right to fill out your entire atlas passive tree, um, to unlock your favorite map slots, to upgrade your pantheons, like everything that you can do on League Start that you don't have to do with your second character, for example, like unlocking um, passive points and so on. I want to do my invitations uh, and yeah, just um, unlock the entire thing. And as we know, we're going to have two extra Atlas passive trees available once we go further through the campaign. I think at some point they're going to unlock. That means once we have finished everything or all the, the core content of the game, when it comes to the progression part, uh, we should be able to have two additional Atlas passive trees. That means that we could just play around with a map sustain tree early on. And once we have finished everything, instead of like buying regret, uh, like uh, orbs of unmaking to um, reset the tree, we're just going to um, activate our second tree and start making our first currency based strategy. Good. So let's talk about how do we get maps? What are the important things? What things here? can help us early on to have like a better um, experience while mapping, better um, sustain, and also what kind of leak mechanics will add to that um, goal of completing everything. Basically, um, I think one thing that is very, very valuable are the Kirok modifiers. So what that essentially does is Kirok um, will have you, or at least once you're mapping, you have like chances to unlock a, a Kirok mission on completion. And Kirok will basically offer you maps. And these maps can be like magic, rare, corrupted, unique maps, uh, special maps, you know, like all these kind of things, even like Conqueror maps and, and Guardian maps later on. But essentially, he's, he's giving you maps that you don't have to buy and that you don't have to roll. And it most likely will be maps that you haven't done for your Atlas yet. Please make sure that low tier maps have to be at least um, magic to have the bonus completion. Uh, yellow tier maps, at least rare and high tier maps, rare and corrupted, which is be the hardest thing. Uh, and yeah, Kirok has been always doing a great job for me of um, yeah giving me additional maps with uh, yeah stuff that I basically need. So I want to uh, go ahead and pick all like the Kirok notes and especially going on the right side here for the small chance to grant additional Kirok um, completion modifiers. Um, Next up, we have two more Kirok clusters, which is on the bottom right side and on the bottom left side. They basically do the same thing. Chance to grant additional Kirok missions as well as um, chance or increased chance to getting Atlas scouting reports, um, which essentially help you because if Kirok doesn't offer you anything that you need, you just use one of these Kirok scouting reports and it rerolls the offers that he has. So you can fish for certain maps uh, that you want to take or you want to have. Um, basically, so this and this is basically a no-brainer for me as well. Then let's talk about the how to go about the upgrading the maps. And here we have basically three modifiers, and which is shaping the mountains, we have shaping the skies, and on top here, this is probably what I would take early on, is shaping the world. All of these things here are doing the same um, thing, like they give you like special map crafting option stuff. This is not important, but the tier 1 to 15 maps have a, a found, have a 50% 
um, chance to become one tier higher. And this will help you getting higher tiers of what you are currently running, helping you with, um, with progressing Atlas from bottom to top. And there is a couple more notes over here uh, that will do uh, the same thing. Uh, and I would pick the right side here. It's not like that we need that. It's just like I need to get like a traveling notes. Either I pick the overload circuits, the bold undertakings, or the back to basics, even when I get those uh, small three uh, notes over here. You can take them or you cannot take them. I don't see a reason why I would not take the increased chance of dropping higher tier maps. Good. So we have uh, basically... Um, yeah, the core things where you say, hey, we have Kirak and we get uh, additional Kirak crafting options. What would be the next thing? Um, I would actually now would opt in for Nico. And this has a very specific reason. So here we have like a lot of chances and to gain additional Nico. I think here it's like 40%. Um, and then we're going to go for the pact with energy as well as later on with some more Kirak modifiers on top here. So what this is doing... Um, Nico is not here to actually provide us with a soul fight so we can go delve, while delve can actually give you a map sustain and stuff. Uh, but the main thing here is this note over here. You gain 1% one, uh, 1 to all maximum elemental resistances for each Voltaxic soul fight vein uh, or chest found in your map. Usually it's like your three piles of soul fight, uh, but what it gives you is also increased damage and movement speed. So while just going into the um, map and just picking up your sulfite notes, you're going to get up to 45% increased movement speed or even more with these like uh, veins and stuff um, and increased damage. Basically like 100% increased damage in like 45% increased uh, movement speed. And in mapping or in leak start scenarios where you don't have a lot of um, gear, you're not going to start mapping with a six link with, a, I don't know, quality on your gems, with awakened gems and, and I don't know, watcher's eyes and stuff. So it doesn't matter which leak starter you pick, in the end of the day, they're all trash can characters and they will be a lot stronger once you get into the uh, currency grinding part and upgrade your gear. But early on, um, like having 100% increased damage globally and uh, movement speed will go a long way of completing maps faster, means you can uh, more efficiently um, browse through your atlas. So I think these Nico nodes are very, very nice to have. Next point are the nodes that say chance for monsters in each of your maps to drop an additional connected map, at least one monster. But uh, essentially, connected maps is basically the lines that are connected with your map on your atlas, and you want and you need that basically to branch out and uh, upgrade your maps and, and get different maps based on the maps you're running. Sounds complicated, but in the end of the day, um, the additional connected map. So here are all these small little points and I would basically take all of them without the ones on the outside because I think these are like too many travel points to get these uh, little notes. But uh, basically you can take all these like small little notes over here um, to fill up um, your yeah additional connected map drops and this will go a long way with sustaining everything. So that will be my base core tree I would say um, to start things off and now we can add additional things. I am personally a big favor of like blocking out every single leak mechanic. Reason for that is um, my goal early on is to get map drops, to sustain my maps, to upgrade my maps and to complete the Atlas. It's not about farming heist, farming uh, daily mirrors, farming ultimatum and stuff like that. I personally never really care about anything in my maps if it's not um, counting towards my, my completion. And yes, some people will say now, uh, now, yeah, but early on you can get some nice stuff out of it. Yeah, but early on we not spec that it's more like of the middle or when we push into high tier maps. Because honestly, if if it's like, let's, let's say day two and I'm opening a tier 10 map and there is a harvest growth, uh, I don't see a point of going in there for this like what, like 200 juice and it will probably take longer to, f uh, to clear the harvest growth itself other than running the map and then put already in the next map. Um, so I personally don't see a reason. So it's just my two cents. If you don't have, if you have not specced into a leak mechanic on your tree, it's probably not worth running it. As an example, breach. I open a breach. I kill all the monsters. Takes like I don't know, 10, 15, maybe 20 seconds. And what do I get out of it? Maybe three ble uh, breach splinter. Like yeah, that's that's amazing. I'd rather just um, skip three breach stones and run two additional maps in that kind of regard, right? Obviously, if you have spec into breach and stuff like that, you obviously want to do that because this is where you get all the good stuff. But if you have not spec into it, it's most likely not worth doing it. And that's why I usually just block it out because like, whatever. But there is, you know, reasons to make to say, yeah, I can, I can sell contracts and stuff. This is like 
whatever you want to do, you do. I just personally don't care about anything, right? If you spec that or not, up to you. But um, let's go further. What else can there be that would help us with the additional map sustain? And this is Harby. Uh, reason for that is we have the Harbinger Orbs and we have the Orb of Horizons, right? I think the Harby Orb was like upgrade your map uh, by tier and the Orb of Horizon is re-rolling the map within its tier, okay? So if I use Orb of Horizons on a tier 50 map, I, it will just roll other tier 50 maps, which helps with completing the Atlas. So if we type in here, now Harby, what I want to take is these notes over here. I'm not really too bothered with the uh, additional point over here. And I want to branch out to the right side here as well um, to gain the additional chance for having Harbingers. And then also here, uh, the chance of the big Harvey. I don't want to take the back to basics. I want to go on uh, the side here and skip that. So now basically taking all the three Harvey clusters and they will drop me uh, besides currency and stuff like that. But the Orb of Horizon and, um, and the Harvey Orbs will help with the mapping aspect. Since we're now scaling up here, we can also take the additional Nico nodes. So now we should have roundabout, if we take those two as well, um, I think it's like 88% chance of, of getting Nico in our map uh, with this tree without any specific, um, what do you say, uh, scarabs or anything like that. So let me quickly recheck with my map here uh, with the template that I already made. All right, the last thing is what else could we take here? I think something that doesn't require time and is not like really slowing you down is strong boxes and shrines. That will be the next thing. That I would pick up so either um, like let's uh, put in here the shrine and here the strong boxes uh, then here this is like for me personally very important strong boxes in your maps are corrupt at least rare means I don't have to roll my maps uh, at all but you want to make sure that you're freeze immune like either through the upgraded pantheon um, like branking pantheon or uh, like just being immune to, to freeze or ailment immune or on your boots and stuff like that right and then we have uh, some more shrine buffs let me here type in shrine so here we have more shrines shrines are basically an easy way there is more monster density for extra experience and stuff but you're also going to get empowered similar to the way as i explained on the nico notes picking that gives you damage and movement speed and the same way is with the shrines you know a gloom shrine can also help with like um clearing the maps faster as well as um the brutal shrine or the speed shrine or anything like that so shrines are always nice to have. I don't think it's necessary to take all of the top side here, but I think overall this would be the tree that I would be looking at. So, um, to summarize it all up again, right? We have the um, additional Kirak stuff for rerolling your maps with the bonus um, scouting reports and stuff like that. Then we have all the map sustain modifiers. We do have Nico for the additional juice in your map for extra speed and extra damage. Uh, we, we picked up all the additional connected maps. We do have all the three shaping things for dropping higher tier maps, which is basically shaping the world. Um, then we have shaping the skies and shaping the seas or the mountains in this case. Uh, and then once we have that, then we opt in into Harbies for the Harby orbs and stuff like that. And then we pick up shrines and strong boxes because strong box is always nice to have uh, and shrines will also empower your mapping speed. This is basically my tree that I will go early on with the first like 113 points and then it's like up to you what you want to farm. Do you opt in now for the Eater Exarch or um, stuff like that? Maybe like Guardian Drops, maybe whatever you want to do. But this is like the core thing that I'm going to go for. And once then there is only like a, a 20 maps remaining um, to or at least like any invitations to fill it up. But this is then when I would pick my second Atlas tree where I say like I don't need the majority of these things. And now I can start making my first currency strategy. And I still don't know what this is going to be. I have still not checked all the new scarabs or all the new stuff on the tree. Most likely just from my own uh, personal preference, what I've did in the past is something like Legion or Delirium or Ritual. I think those are the three candidates that I would most likely pick after I finished the uh, my Atlas and did my core uh, objectives. There, you, you know, the thing is like, whatever you enjoy, this is the, the stuff that you, should, uh, that you should do. I know there's a lot of people doing a lot of currency with Expedition, but if I personally don't like Expedition, I don't see a point doing it either. But this basically summarizes up my early tree um, for uh, the beginning of the Necropolis League. 
And uh, if you have some uh, additional tips and tricks and what you would do to uh, get an even better experience early on with your map thing, then let me know in the comments. I'm always happy to adjust my tree uh, if people have good ideas and then we can update this together so everybody can take you out of it. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.